So in this segment, we're going to be discussing kind of Labour MPs getting pulled apart on uh, the you know to, uh, Starmer abandoning his pledge to scrap tuition fees, um, and you know kind of the other kind of broken promises that he has made, and um, it does it's not it's not pretty. I'll be honest. And you know the worst thing is he did this unprompted. He mentioned the tuition fees thing unprompted, and he, his statements are so stupid. So uh, we'll, we'll listen to his video first. I think we are going to set out a fairer solution, and Justin. So, you but, know, but but it uh, won't be the it won't be the abandoning of tuition fees, will it? Well, we are likely to move on from that um, commitment because right. we do find ourselves in a different financial situation. But I, I, I don't want that to be read as us accepting for a moment that the current system is fair or that it's yeah. working because no, I no, do I, think I there are other ways of approaching you want to come this. up with that. So he's, you know, unprompted, you know, the, the host was like, well, you're not going to cut, you know, you're not going to abandon your pledge of tuition fees. It's like, well, actually, we're going to look at abandoning it. So it's not even concrete what they're going to do here um, for a start. And it's like, oh, but we are going to reform the system. Surely, right, you don't talk about tuition fees, right? Or you say we've got a plan on tuition fees or whatever. You don't say we're not going to scrap it. Of the or we're not going to abolish the um, the tuition fees because you're going to look stupid, especially when you don't offer an actual alternative to what you're planning to do here. And when you say, "Oh, you know, we can't pretend the system's fair," it's like, so what are you going to do about it? Oh, you got to wait until a manifesto. You, you just look like a melon. You look absolutely stupid. And um, you know, Susanna Reid here, you know, who who doesn't speak a lot on um, Good Morning Britain, but honestly, she just tears Rachel Reeves apart. It's honestly, it's brutal, absolutely brutal reasonable question for people to ask whether they can believe anything that Keir Starmer does actually pledge because uh, the uh, scrapping the tuition fees was a pledge that he made during his campaign to be Labour leader so people would have voted for him perhaps on that basis uh, he also said he would increase income tax for the top uh, earners top five percent of earners uh, backtracked on that uh, supporting I mean I mean the backtracking on the five percent of learners is so stupid because you know like I, I've seen a clip of uh, Emily Thornbury saying well we've had the highest tax rate um, since World War two or for since 70 years or something it's like yeah but not on them you know that the the the, um, the tax rates and stuff like that is a joke you know the, the capital gains tax needs to be reformed um, you know they, they need to put it back in the 50 pence tax rate things like that and he's gone back on that for whatever reason and they're like oh you know the economy's in a state we need to raise money and it's like why are you not promising to raise taxes on the highest earners then it doesn't make any sense the arguments they make common ownership of rail mail energy and water uh, you say spending billions of pounds on nationalizing things just doesn't stack up and he pledged he'd work shoulder to shoulder with unions to stand up for working people but doesn't back the strike and abolish universal credit which isn't going to be due and defend free movement as we leave the eu all of these were well, his pledges well let me uh, just remind you of some of the other pledges to have an employment bill to extend workers' rights, the biggest devolution uh, uh, in a generation. The, the question and is about on the issues pledges like that he, public ownership. We've that committed. He won't. You always want to be careful. I think as an interviewer, hitting someone with so many different points there because they can kind of get scallop and try and get away from it. Um, you want to focus on, I think, the key ones, which would be the tax rate, um, not putting back in the, the higher tax rate and the tuition fees. He won't. Well, that he said and he's now you turned on. So yeah. how do we know what you are saying now is something that you will deliver on in the future, where the promises and the pledges that were made in the past well, I, is now yeah. a pick and mix well, let me, style, let me of, style that, of manifesto? Let me, let me answer that that question let me answer that question that you've you've put to me look circumstances change uh, in politics and i don't think anybody would seriously say that the circumstances when keir became leader of the labor party are the same as the circumstances that we face today when we've had the global pandemic the war in ukraine the conservatives mini budget last year that crashed the economy a massive cost of living crisis and public services on their knees now yeah, but look labor, you could be an ideologue and say well, say regardless of the circumstances, change, but principles well, shouldn't. Well and you know that that's the key point there principles should not change and the thing is that with the rail stuff with the rail that's not going to cost that's not going to cost much to to renationalize it because it's all done with contracts so once the contract ends you can renationalize it or once one of the train services fails to provide a service they can nationalize it we saw that with east coast um, rail line where the tories nationalized it and it actually did well it turned a profit um so it's absolutely ludicrous what they are arguing here especially when the labor party were the party that built the nhs on debt you know, the post World War Two, they borrowed a lot of money to to build the NHS, and no one can argue the NHS wasn't a success. So the argument that oh, we can't afford to do these things now is ridiculous. 
when our debt to GDP was ridiculously high post-war. Um, it's just, it's just, you know, this is they, they are trying to win over votes. That's that's what this is. It's not down to the fact that we can't do it. It's the fact that they are running scared of certain kinds of voters because instead of fighting, you know, winning these arguments or at least trying, what they're doing is they're just cowering away. And this is what Starmer said in 2021, obviously, um, partially into the pandemic as well. Don't make the mistake we made in 2010 after the financial crash, which was to think that the way through this is to go for austerity and really severe cuts to public services. Um, that was a complete mistake, in my view. Um, it stripped away our public services, stripped away our local authorities um, and what they could do, increased inequality massively. I think you've got to build and turbocharge your economy rather than cut um, with austerity out of this. And uh, there's a lot of thinking now that um, the old argument that you need to just balance the book as quickly as possible just isn't right anymore but i think where, where is this guy gone you know this is 2021 this is where this is into the pandemic starmer where, where is this guy you know fair enough is before the the kamikaze budget and all of this stuff but you know where is this brother has anyone got his email address anyone got his phone number can we call this guy can we can we find him put an apb out for him you know i saw emily thornbury just absolutely face plant on politics live over this stuff saying circumstances have changed and all of this stuff um but fundamentally when labor backtrack on promises is they're gonna get grilled on it way more than the tories are because that's the way the media works we know this to be true you know this is this has always happened so for labor to you know try and play victim or whatever or try and you know try and think that this was never going to work or they were never going to get called out is, is nonsense and you got this from ben kentish saying labor spokesman confirms that starmer is committed to maintaining the triple lock on state pensions which currently costs 124 billion but insists current economic climate means 10 billion a year pledge on tuition fees has to be dropped the triple lock costs way more and i'm not saying we should abolish the triple lock on pensions um, especially because these are um, earned benefits from people, you know, people that have worked hard and paid into pension pots. But the idea that we can't afford 10 billion, but we can afford 124 billion, it just doesn't sit right with me at all. Um, so, you know, this doesn't make sense. And you, when you look at what the actual, what some of the voters want here, you know, how should universities be funded? When you look at Labour voters, the vast majority of want, people want universities to be publicly funded. I say vast majority, I mean the highest percentage, 46%, almost half, want university to be publicly funded and the thing is you're you know you're not going to win over young people it just doesn't make sense and you know for me you know labor are struggling here you know i look at the um, the local elections just passed and local elections aren't really the biggest barometer or the best barometer of how successful a party will do but the fact is labor have not gotten many gains in the local elections they will win over council seats but when you look at what an ex what experts like john curtis said here you've got to watch out for you know biased people and we'll go back over this video in, in a separate piece i'm going to do a separate segment but it's just not good listening to this this kind of stuff or at least from a person who wants Labour to win. I look at the moment looking at the Conservatives recording fewer a lower share of the vote uh, in our key councils than they did four years ago and four years ago it was already pretty bad. What is a little less clear is how much we should say that the plaudits go to Labour and how much the plaudits should go to the Liberal Democrats and to the Greens. Now, certainly when it comes to seat gains, it's definitely Labour who have made the, the biggest advance. But I think Labour will just be a little bit niggled about the fact that, again, when we add up the votes, the party doesn't seem to have made, at least in these local government elections, much of an advance on last year. I think it would at least like to have been at least up a point or two. If you think about what happened last year, you had, since then, you've had the Kamakwazi budget, Liz Trust absolutely decimating the Tories. And, you know, in local elections, it is, you know, regardless of how much people like their local councillors or whatever, it's the National Party that does help a lot in local elections. It's the way the National Party is perceived that does have a big impact. The Lib Dems did really well in the 2010 local elections um, in around that kind of time period because the Lib Dems did really well at the national elections. And then that local support kind of just faded away back in towards the Tories. Um, local, local elections are an OK barometer of the way national elections are going or, you know, of how voters feel. Um, it's not the best uh, best indicator in the sense of people can vote for parties. They wouldn't typically vote for at a general election because, you know, if you think your local Lib Dem candidate who you like is going to win, um, you know, in the council elections, you'll vote for them rather than voting Labour. But if you're in a seat where only Labour or Conservative can win, then you're more likely to either vote Labour if you're, you know, uh, if you want to get rid of the Tories. And then 
or you don't vote, you know, you, you, if you vote Lib Dem, you've kind of wasted your vote and you can still vote Lib Dem, sure, or Green, but it's not going to have the effect of getting rid of the Tories. That's going to be one of the things that do help Labour in the sense of people are going to be put in a position where if they want to get rid of the Tories, they might have to vote Labour. But if they don't like the Labour Party or don't really care for them that much, they might just stay home. That's going to be the problem they run into. In contrast, the Liberal Democrats are up a point or so, and in the end, if the Conservatives do, as they still seem to be at risk of uh, being uh, a thousand seats down on where they were at seven o'clock uh, yesterday morning, uh, then it may well be the losses that the, Liberal Demo the Conservatives suffered to the Liberal Democrats that will be a crucial part of that equation. I mean, that's not. Okay, the, the Tories being down by about five percentage points and Labour only picking up 0.1 percent. That's not good. It's not a good sign. You may find the Liberal Democrats have just, it's not great progress, it's, it's slow progress, but the Liberal Democrats may have recorded their best performance since 2010. The Greens pretty much managed to hang on to the support that they uh, had in 2019, which was a record level, have done particularly well in the wards where they best had a chance. So, I mean, there are two ways of then looking at this so far as the opposition parties are concerned. One is to say, well, English local government is not like Westminster, it's more variegated, and therefore don't be surprised that, that, uh, that voters have sometimes used the Liberal Democrats and the Greens to express their dissatisfaction and not just Labour. The alternative way of looking at it is perhaps there is a message here that voters are not yet necessarily fully enthused mm. about the Labour alternative, even if they are clearly disenchanted about the current Conservative government. Okay, so it might be the case that you still have people who t typically vote Conservative, still don't want to cross cross the that kind of threshold and vote Labour. They're, they're more happy to vote Lib Dem. That's why you have certain seats that swing between Lib Dem and the Conservatives rather than Lib Dems and Labour. Um, it just depends how you want to look at it. But you always got to be careful of bias actors who will tell you, oh, everything's a Labour win or certain things are, are great for Labour when they're really not. That's the thing you got to be careful of. People who play for teams. Um, sorry to blind you with this kind of yellow graphic from Sky. Um, really unfortunate colour choice from them. But, you know, they, they've got an expert on saying, uh, Professor Michael Thrasher, who said, like, if the kind of if this kind of trend of the local election holds for the general election next year, which obviously we know because protest votes and all everything else we kind of discussed, it would lead to a hung parliament with Labour becoming the biggest party. Um, but I, I don't see the kind of confidence in um, the Labour Party. That's the that's the key problem. But I think, you know, Starmer's got just over a year. He's got to come up with some ideas and really win people over here. Because what I can, what I can see happening is just a low turnout election. Um, where people don't really come out to vote that much and I don't know if that helps the Conservatives more because typically older voters do come out and vote and they'll vote Conservative um, whereas younger people and kind of I think depending on how you define younger people maybe people under 30 won't typically vote and so that doesn't help Labour at all so Labour have a lot to do um, the local election results are good for them but um, they're not amazing they're not you know the winners that the Labour Party kind of need um, it's not a home run basically so um John Curtis is one they always bring out during uh, elections. Um, he's very good at what he does, very um, good at predictions and other things. So when he speaks, people should listen, um, especially when, you know, regardless of how good you are at numbers, this this is this man's job at the end of the day. Um, you know, he's he's an ex he's the, probably one of the biggest experts in, in Britain, let's be honest. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Or should I say the United Kingdom? Because this is he's based in Ireland, I think, in Northern Ireland. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, you know, Labour got a lot to do. Got a lot to do here, in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.